playing a GameCube is easy, right? Just hook up a controller and you're good to go, right? Well, that's what I thought, until I saw all of these weird accessories you can hook up to your GameCube. It's cubicle! I guess the controller was too boring for some people, so Nintendo said, fine, play our games with bongos! Okay, yeah, sure, sounds fun. So today I wanted to take a little walk through the strange land of GameCube accessories. I guess we can start by talking about the aforementioned bongos. Bongos! Yeah, definitely one of the stranger options for a controller. Nintendo always likes to be different, so while the rest of the world was giving you a guitar to play with, Nintendo gave you the Kong Family Drums. I remember seeing the commercial back in the day and thinking, what the heck is this? And what is this guy's problem? The bongos had two functions. The first was the part where you would hit it like a madman, and the second was a little microphone on top where you would clap and the characters would react. These things were, not surprisingly, only compatible with Donkey Kong related games. First, there was the Donkey Konga Trilogy, a series of rhythm games in the same vein as Guitar Hero. It was alright. I mean, for what it was, it did the job. There were really only a handful of songs I actually wanted to play, like the Mario Bros theme, Pokemon anime intro, and DK rap. But 90% of the songs in the games are just... Rock Lobster and the Turkish March. <laughs> Why? Then there was Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. I personally had more fun with this game. It was a 2D side-scroller that you controlled with the bongos. In an era of Mario Sunshine and Twilight Princess, a 2D side-scroller was definitely not what the people were expecting. The game isn't really difficult, but it's not really meant to be. Seeing Donkey Kong smash and crash his way through everything while you aggressively slap the bongos like an ape yourself is very therapeutic. When I first played the game, I thought it would just be a mindless slapping simulator, but the amount of mechanics and finite details you need to do to these bongos to control Donkey Kong is pretty amazing. And once you finish a boss fight, you do get to smack the bongos as fast as possible, and have Donkey Kong Detroit smash the enemy's face in. And last but not least, there's Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. No. All in all, the Donkey Kong bongos were a charming accessory that everyone could enjoy. Even people who don't play video games could get a kick out of them. Question! Have you ever simultaneously wanted to play a GameCube and type out a Word document at the same time? If you have, then please get out of my house. This is the ASCII keyboard controller. And yes, the name is just as hilarious as its design. I never knew this was real. I saw pictures of it online and thought it was just a joke. But here we are. Now you might be thinking, just how many games are compatible with this thing? One. This keyboard controller hybrid was made with one game in mind. Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2. Now this game is absolutely amazing. I love it so much. The game is an RPG set in this futuristic space setting. You have lightsabers, blasters, and all kinds of weird names for things like Monomate, which now that I'm looking at it resembles a juice box. The game was most memorable for its co-op, being one of the few GameCube games that allowed you to connect to the internet. Yeah, could you imagine playing Melee online with laggy 2005 internet? There would have been riots. Since the game was a co-op RPG, you would encounter other players, and since there was no voice chat or anything, text was the only way to get your message across. And doing it with a joystick is definitely not optimal. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I have to type a message in-game using a controller, I always lose motivation halfway through and think, is this message really that important? But now you can type effectively and slay monsters! Such an odd design for a controller. It took up two entire plug-in slots. If you want one now, they're pretty spendy to be honest, always going over a hundred dollars. I guess if you were super dedicated to the game, then it was a good investment. Otherwise, you can just show it off, being like, Oh my gosh, they actually made this and I actually have it! The Logitech Speed Force Racing Wheel. Now that's one of the coolest names I've ever heard for anything. Apart from that though, it's a steering wheel. Compatible with all sorts of racing games, from Mario Kart Double Dash to Need for Speed. 
It's- it's a steering wheel. I'm sorry I don't have a novel worth of script to talk about. You ever want to play handheld games on your TV? I never have personally, but anyway, here's the Game Boy Player. This thing was chonky. You'd place it at the bottom of your GameCube and it would allow you to play your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games on your TV. For some reason, it also needed a disc to work? Like, this is a lot of effort to go through to play games that look like this on your TV. Especially since this is a pre-eShop world where you could just download old games at the snap of your fingers, it was a nice addition. But surprisingly, one of the most useful accessories that would give you the most bang for your buck was the Game Boy Advance Link Cable. This weird thing would allow you to hook up a Game Boy Advance to your GameCube and use the console itself as a controller. What made this thing unique was that every game would have a different function and use for it. Some games would use the e-reader, which was an accessory itself for the Game Boy Advance. This would allow you to scan cards you would have to buy and unlock new items and content in games. Some examples include Animal Crossing, Amazing Island, and a frickin' baseball game. Scanning the cards through the GBA would grant you unlockables and extra items in your GameCube game. This is also a cluster f a GameCube accessory hooking up a GBA hooking up a scanner. This is like some mad science experiment. Also, remember Fantasy Star? That game also had some secrets. If you hooked up your GBA, you were able to play mini games like Puyo Puyo and Nights into Dreams. There was also a tiny Chow Garden mini game where you could import a Tails looking Chow from that game into Sonic Adventure 2. That's insane! Who would ever think to do that in a pre internet world? Some of the more well-known functions for this thing would be using the GBAs as extra controllers in games, like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles and Legend of Zelda Four Swords. These games were capable of multiplayer, as long as you had three other friends with three GBAs and three copies of the game. You really had to be dedicated to the cause. And even then, they have to play on a Game Boy Advance screen while you get the whole TV. If you had Wario World, you were able to transfer a demo of WarioWare Inc. microgames to your GBA. Metroid Prime would give you a new costume. Frickin' Wind Waker allowed for multiplayer? What? This is the first time I'm hearing of this. It actually really wasn't anything too special. It's about as cooperative as Super Mario Galaxy, where the second player is just a cursor that collects star bits. The Tingle Tuner essentially just points out items on a map. Great. You can also drop bombs at a fee, so that's kind of funny. But if we're talking about funny, nothing on this earth is funnier than Nintendo's microphones! Mario! Finish! Cover your ears, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is amazing. Only compatible with a few games, but Mario Party is probably the most infamous. You control the characters in minigames by shouting words. Yeah, it totally doesn't get annoying saying FIRE, LASERS, BOMBS. It was alright, I guess. FIRE! Mario Party Island Tour obviously takes the cake, however, for funniest microphone moments. Thank you for letting this exist. Anyway, that was the weird and interesting world of GameCube accessories. What was your favorite, and what accessories do you think should have existed? I personally think there should have been something to make the GameCube itself more... spherical. It's spherical! <laughs>
I would appreciate it if it said stupid idiot more on it. I would feel less dumb playing with a controller that says that as opposed to Mad Cats. So thank you for being the worst controller ever. Thanks!